Expectations they keep weighing me down. My heart is begging me to get the hell out of my head. I'm trying to live inside the upside down. For a minute and pretend. Honey, I'm a perfect ten. Whoa. Honey, I'm a perfect ten. Whoa. And if I say it enough, it gets ingrained in my head. And I start to think. Honey, I'm a perfect ten. Does perfect even mean? Is there even such a thing? Oh, ooh. can we switch up all the rules and imagine a utopia? Darling, I'm just so fed up with these expectations. They keep weighing me down. My heart is begging me to get the hell out of my head. I'm trying to live inside the upside down for a minute and pretend. Honey, I'm a perfect ten, whoa, whoa Honey, I'm a perfect ten, whoa, whoa And if I say it enough, it gets ingrained in my head And I start to see Honey, I'm a perfect ten Expectations they keep weighing me down. My heart is begging me to get the hell out of my head. I'm trying to live inside the upside down. For a minute and pretend. Honey, I'm a perfect ten. Whoa, whoa. Honey, I'm a perfect ten. Whoa, whoa. And if I say it enough, it gets ingrained in my head. And I start to see. Honey, I'm a
Expectations they keep weighing me down My heart is begging me to get the hell out of my head I'm trying to live inside the upside down For a minute and pretend Honey, I'm a perfect end Whoa, honey, I'm a perfect end Whoa, and if I say it Does perfect even mean? Is there even such a thing? Oh, ooh. can we switch up all the rules and imagine a utopia? Darling, I'm just so fed up with these expectations. They keep weighing me down. My heart is begging me to get the hell out of my head. I'm trying to live inside the upside down for a minute and pretend. Honey, I'm a perfect ten. It's a tug of war, battling to keep my sanity. Say no more, say no more. I love you, but.
Welcome back to the second game of Meta tonight. My name is Ewan E. I'll just read it. I'm joined by Reinhardt to witness the Victorian schools going head to head. Melbourne High School Black going up against Reservoir High School for our second game of the day. I am absolutely ecstatic to see this. Like we're seeing two teams from the same town versing off in one another. This is going to be quite the, this is going to be quite the rivalry. I mean, you're bursting someone in your own town. It's only natural that you're going to have like some form of rivalry going between one another. And I feel as though no one is going to be holding each other back at all. This is going to be a full-on fist fire. Oh, I'm hoping for it, Ryan. It's going to be very excited to see these two teams going head to head in today's game. And it would be very fun to see if this team follows what we currently consider the meta or whether they go their own way because in the first game of today we did see the teams both run a bit of a more untraditional composition we saw you know very high damage scaling junglers as opposed to the gank heavy junglers that we see in the higher elo so do are we expecting players to shift towards well this is meta so we should copy it or more of a this is more our style let's just stick to what we think we know we're doing i'm I'd like to agree with you on that, but I would also like to, making this a bit more of a constructive conversation, I feel as though it could go either way. I mean, some people, there are people do have their, you know, their met some methods to their own madness. And some people like to actually follow different, uh, you know, different strategies based on, you know, who they like to follow. Like commonly, I do see a lot of people follow the Korean circuit and, and so forth. And being, you know, fresh off the boat, I have no idea what these two teams are like what they are you know going to bring to the plate today in this broadcast i am hoping that we see something really unconventional that's really going to put us on our feet it's really going to make us think uh like that's pretty much that's my personal opinion that's what i'm hoping to see from these two teams here today 
Oh, we'll have to find out as we will be loading into Champion Select very shortly. But the bigger champions that I'm going to be keeping my eye out for are the meta champions, specifically the worst defenders right now is the likes of the Hecarim and the Jarvan for the top lane and the jungle respectively. They are very powerful right now. And I'd love to see whether these teams decide to take their own style of League of Legends into today's match or whether they shift more towards what the meta is saying. And I think we'll be able to tell quite a lot as... Okay, so we're going for the uh, the OCE special with the Mordekaiser first ban. I... I'm a little bit saddened to see him, like, you know, banned away. But then again, at the same time, there could be a reason, there could be a method behind this madness. They don't want to see Mordekaiser, even like, even though his remake hasn't come out yet, it's nice to see that he's, you know, he's tucked away into the bank corner, he's benched. And this could actually open up something for the teams. Indeed, we'll have to find out one very fun band so far. And we'll see what the teams have in store for us. As the Nami is also the second band for the Melbourne High School. And Kaiser taken away by Reservoir. So outside of the Mordecai, is a, a bit more traditional when we look, look at the bands and the power picks they're trying to deny. A bit more traditional. That doesn't really feel like it fits the bill quite well. I guess you, <laughs> I want to say it's more they're really fitting into the meta. Nami is a really strong Enchantress support. And like, you know, blocking her away is nice to see. Yeah, uh, the Shaco being taken away, the Jar, and there we go, one of the champions that I was talking about earlier, finally banned away, but I don't feel like we'll be getting uh, what we can compare to meta champions being locked in, and in a way, I do quite like that. I love watching players bring their own sort of unique style to League of Legends. The Mordekaiser ban uh, sings that in spades, and we'll see. Reservoir, their final ban is going to be an Urgot, oh. so... What do we think that now Melbourne High School will bring to the table? Oh, there's no way it's going to be Saratona. Sar oh, yes. Yeah, so I, right? I, am, I am bringing up that lasso if they pick away that Sona. <laughs> well, we'll have to find out as they are looking. I think they're hovering it to say, hey, do you want this? Do you want this? They're putting it into the forefront of their mind before denying it. And now Reservoir, they may feel forced to take the Sona just to deny Tarek Sona. <laughs> It could actually work out that way. I mean, we have seen this in North America as well as Korea. I'm very interested to seeing whether they're actually going to get uh, Sona to be, you know, picked for that bottom lane unique duo. I don't really want to say it's Mena because it's really unconventional. It's like when we experienced a couple of extras in the past with, you know, Swain and Aurelio and Yasuo. In a situation like this, I'm curious. Ooh, but instead they say, okay, you can have Tarek Sona if you want. We're going in Vayne and Leona, and that's going to be quite fun coming out of Reservoir and later in the game that goes. And I want to see now, Black, they, they, Melbourne High School Black, they know Reservoir are now running a almost engaged composition, seeing the lights of Leona. So I would love if they now start drafting uh, some disengage for their lineup. I, will, I have to agree with you on that. I mean, getting a disengage based comp when you've got a Leona that's a hardcore CC engage based support, and then you've got Vayne who follows up quite well, especially once she gets two items. Those items being Gwinso Rage Blade, uh, and I believe commonly you see Blade of the Ruin King or a crit chance item. It definitely would be a nice thing to see. Exactly. We'll see what they decide to do as we're hovering the Sona, but I feel like this Tarek Sona is more of a oh no they are deciding that they're going to do in, this so a lot of risk i i am i am astonished i'm actually really i'm really liking what we're seeing like this is really unconventional something you don't commonly see i wonder if they're actually going to pull it off quite well though i mean me and chat like they look very confident in playing that comp but i wonder if they can like you know they could show up you know they've got the skills to pay the bills well, we'll have to find out because the biggest thing with Tarek Sona that I've noticed about destroying them is you poke them down over long distance. And unfortunately, Leona Vane doesn't exactly have the uh, the long range harassment to really lock them down. But maybe the brand for Brand or AFK in the middle lane can help them out there quite a bit. I feel as though we should like we shouldn't be surprised Brand's being picked considering the summoner name itself. Oh, oh, the Yasuo taken away. So. Don't want to let Sherlock or Miko get access to that champion because Yasuo, I feel like, especially in these sort of games, can be very feast or famine. He's either going to go 15-0 and 0 or 0-15. And, and maybe it's one of those times you think it's just not worth the risk of letting him through. So I do quite like the ban away. And the poppy ban is very interesting to me because that tells me it's a specific matchup that they're trying to avoid out of the side of MHS Black. 
Yeah, it's like they're actually it's they've scouted out their enemy composition, and they really want to make sure that some champ, some players like you know Pregsy, uh, Zoid, and Harle, I believe more or less uh, Leon, don't really want to actually get online. They don't want to get their comfortable base champions, ones that they think will pop off quite well. But we'll find out. Nasus ban makes me very sad to see her. May, I may or may not main the dog, so a little sad to see that one being taken away. But it makes a lot of sense. If you're played safe enough in the early game of the Nasus, you can get to 300 stacks by 20 minutes. And at that point, the side lane pressure game is in Nasus's favor. So I do quite like that. Anyway, and Kennen, a very powerful top laner, taken away too. It's interesting. He's actually been... <clears throat> Sorry, by voice. It's very interesting that he's taken away. He's been very, sorry, no, he's he's been really interesting to see played on the map. I mean, especially with Kleptomancy in the last couple of patches. It's nice to see him tucked away in the ban list, so that way we don't have to worry about him so much. Exactly, but we will have to worry about the likes of the Sejuani, and Miko will probably be forced to take the cleanse that we see him hovering as that is going to be Leon in the jungle, and that means we don't know what Prezzi is taking for the top lane. And We'll see what they decide to take up for that counter pick at the end of pick and ban. But I love seeing the Sejuani here because now Reservoir have a champion that they can easily pull the trigger with and follow up a potential Leona engage. I have to agree wholeheartedly. Just looking at that, we've got Sejuani with her Glacial Tomb. Leona with her giant, um, you know, Fury of the Sun ultimate. That's just going to be one heck of a combination to behold. I fear for Melbourne at this point. Exactly, gotta be a little bit careful about that engage follow-up, and then the brand, you do not want to get caught in that ultimate either, but MHS Black picking very confident solo laners, the Fiora split push up for Sherlock, and Cassiopeia did receive a little bit of love recently, the change of the mana cost on her E for that middle lane, so we'll see how that goes, and Pregnancy says, you can take a split pusher, but I will match you toe for toe, and then help my team out with the Shen. This is looking like a very juicy combination. Just look at these teams. Just look at the matchups we've got. Like as we allow all the, like both teams to sort out their champion roster from top to support, it's really nice to see. Like we've got like a very strong engage based comp coming uh, showing up on the side of Reservoir. Melbourne, on the other hand, I feel as though they're trying to go for a bit more of an early game because you've got champions like Fiora and Lee Sin, Leona and Tarek. Cassiopeia is pretty good. She's pretty much one of those types of champions that does need a bit of, uh, you know, she needs an item or two in order to start, you know, popping off and highlighting across the map. Or what are your thoughts, Iotos? Um, I actually do quite like the Melbourne High School composition. I mean, I'm always a fan of split pushing compositions. So I see the Fiora and I see Elise in, and I think to myself, if Eels can have a very proactive early game, he should be able to get his Fiora ahead to get the split push going, get the Cassio ahead over the brand, and potentially could even look to keep accelerate Sona Tarek. Although, let's be real with ourselves here, Reinhardt. I expect Sona Tarek to be able to look after itself, especially against a vain Leona, who they're going to get a lot of harassment thrown their way. I I have to agree with you on that, Yatos. I mean, we're going to have quite a lot of action happening bottom lane, especially since we're seeing that unconventional, uh, sorry, the unconventional combination of Tarek and Sona. They, like, Sona is really strong as a poking, as a poke base support. And with Tarek to be able to, you know, throw a shield on her as well as a heal and then a stun in re like in response to Leona probably trying to get that Zealer Blade on top of either one of them, it could really be a, a matter of like, you know, who can catch who out and whether or not uh, Chat and me can really turn the tides and punish, you know, Leon for actually trying to engage wholeheartedly on at least one of them. I mean, Le Leona is that type of champion that can catch one person out, completely stun chain them for, uh, let's... Let's count up to about four seconds. But going up against a comp like that, where you've got Tarek that can just put on a shield and you know absorb damage, heal what has already been done, and then throw out a stun in response, they would probably need to look for some better opportunities where they might be somewhat disconnected from one another. If they can remain far apart, when it comes to basic attack ranges and who's within your you know your vicinity to a basic attack, Tarek and Sona could be out of bounds a little bit. That's only if Vayne is within the same range as Leona when she tries to go and catch somebody out. Looking at other lanes, though, Lee Sin versus Edwani. Lee Sin, we definitely know, is a historically early early game-based champion because as soon as he gets three those three abilities, as soon as he hits level three, he can pop off quite well. And like you know, if he decides to go a level two gank, that's really going to help him out. And I can only assume he'll probably try and help either Miko mid lane trying to take down Brand to get that early game lead because Cassiopeia versus Brand. Let's face it, Brand does have the advantage because he has 
he has that pillar of flame. He has the uh, the extra, like you know, the extra highlights and stuff. Whereas Cassiopeia, her biggest downfall is that she's she really lacks movement speed. She can't buy boots. She can only rely on either you know movement speed extended items or just essentially trying to level up. And Sherlock versus Shen. I'm very curious to see how that's going to go. That top lane is one of these ones where. Sherlock, he is going to feel like he's running himself into a brick wall. Shen is pretty much the, I don't really care how strong you are, I should be able to hold you off. With that Spirit's Refuge and the auto attacks and just the general kit, it's basically saying, your split push game needs to be on point or it's going to fall apart. And then when my team decides, hey, we're going for a team fight, I have that stand united, I can jump straight in. You still got to teleport even if, if your teleport even is available to you. So... I like the Shen as the reactionary seeing, okay, you're going to split push. I'm going to deal with you with Shen. I will have to see, is Pregzi able to stay toe for toe? Because even if you are playing something like the Shen, if you fall too far behind in this particular matchup, it doesn't matter that you are playing Shen. Fiora can just start getting away with tower diving you uh, once she has the lifesteal and the damage to get burned through your resistances. Oh, just pop, just thinking about Fiora being able to pop those vitals on top of Shen is just a disaster. I mean, she's pretty much like one of those types of champions that can still dish out a lot of damage on Shen when that anti basic attack field is, you know, highlighted around him. Like he can, she can, he can defend against anything Sherlock throws at him as long as he doesn't hit those vitals. I mean, once you hit those vitals, it doesn't matter how much health you have. That does maximum damage and it heals her for, even though it's only really small, you know, the small things do add up over time. Exactly. We'll see how that goes as we are now loaded into our second game of the day. Melbourne High School Black going head to head against Reservoir High School. I do kind of want to get your feeling this run out. We've had a bit of overview of both, both these teams and kind of what they want to get going on. But who do you think uh, is going to come out with the double? Who are, the team is going to come out with the double. Now it feels like we're going to be playing the game of uh, favorites here. Thank you for that, Iatos. But a game I... of favorites, a game of who do we think has the better shot? Yeah, I think it comes right. down to more, you know, the game time. Like, you know, if we're talking pre-15 minutes, if we're talking like pre-30 minutes, I feel as though that Reservoir do have the advantage. But coming into sort of like, you know, I guess somewhere in between, because both teams sort of look pretty even, it's going to be, I feel as though it's either way. Like, I do have a little bit of, uh, you know, a bit of a flag heading towards Reservoir just because of their team comp. Exactly, but we will be loaded in it now, guys. I hope we are all synced up. So three, two, one, go. And we are loaded in our second game of tonight. And I want to see early level one shenanigans. They are probably the greatest thing in my opinion. And I really want to see uh, the team's budding hairs before the minions have spawned into the rift. Well, from what we can see, you know, just coming into this 35 second uh, timer, we've already got a lot of dancing around. We've got Brand pretty much facing off against Sherlock and Eels. I guess he's, it looks like they're trying to play the game of fishing. They're trying to bait one another out. That pillar of flame straight off the bat really shows how strong Brand is early. And versing a Cassiopeia who has very limited movement speed, I feel as though Brand's going to have a much more comfortable time pre-6. I mean, oh, yeah, once he hits six, it's going to be an even more of a, you know, a bit of a justifying moment. But even still, he like Brand is overall just a really good champion. He really burns around the map quite comfortably. Um, exactly. We're not seeing a lot of action coming around, though. Like, we see Brand go back to base, a bit of a questionable move. I am curious, looking at his summoner stone, he's got that Dark Harvest. Exactly. That is maybe not a traditional summoner when it comes to like i see dark harvest on the brand supports purely because you want to get an extra bit of damage but i mean when you do have the likes of 500k mastery points in a champion you have to feel like mm, dark harvest is probably the way he likes to play that champion at this point uh in the game it can make it makes sense i mean if when you want to proc a lot and you get them below 50 percent health the more you proc it early the more strong, the stronger it becomes, really, because it just stacks infinitely, just like a Nasus. Oh, and we're seeing a bit of a skirmish happening on the bottom side for now. Tarek and Sona getting a little bit of poke damage onto Leona, and I kind of like that when it comes to these. And Harley is constantly tumbling into me. 
I'm really curious what he's trying to gain from being very pokey. I mean, he's not really wheeling trades quite well. He is losing in terms of damage output. His health bar is the lowest in bottom lane. Cerna does have that upfront aggression. Like, once she pops that Q and basic attacks in succession, that is quite the feast. Ooh, they did hit level two first. We'll see, can they engage onto chat? They are able to get it away. And uh, Harley has actually burnt his health pot very early on. So now he can't really sustain from the harassment. He's getting sure the Jordan's blade has got a little bit of life steal, but that's not going to be enough when Midai is getting all the damage out that he needs to, especially in this early game. Because of Stoner, as you have said, Reinhardt, if there's one thing she can do in the early game in laning phase, it is harass. And what makes it even more promising is that she's got Kleptomancy, so we're looking for her to be aggressive. Oh no, Brand is going hardcore into Miko, right in mid, just trading off hardcore. I feel like Cassiopeia did actually win that quite hard, mainly because she actually managed to get her poison onto him. And when you're, when you're Cassiopeia and you get a poison on somebody, your Twin Fangs do a lot of damage, they heal, they heal you in succession. It is pretty much what highlights her. Exactly, but right now Maka come back into the jungle. Eel is being a bit cheeky, trying to steal away Zordal's camps, and Zordal's actually taking a lot of damage and realize, hey, I don't think I can fight this man, forcing the skirmish around the chickens. But on that point in the middle lane, part of the reason he also came out on top of that trade is because he wasn't able to land his pillar of flames. The brand oh. W was not able to connect to a priority, uh, connect on to the Cassiopeia. So a lot of the damage missing in that mid lane combo. The, this is looking like quite the quite the fisticuff based match. Like we're seeing top lane facing off against each other, mid lane trading, bottom lane trading. Lee Sin's trading, like Lee Sin's gone and invaded Zoid, and he's really looking to try and punish him. I wonder how successful he will be. I mean, Sejuani is quite low on health, which will force him to go back to base and gives Lee Sin a bit more comfortability to roam about on the map. Top lane. I'm just loving how Sherlock is just hitting those vitals. Like there is no pro she is having no problems hitting those vitals this early. And I fear as though it's only gonna get worse later. Because if you can do that well this soon, it's pretty much like, you know, it's only gonna get worse from here. And this could be like I think we're gonna see the game open up, but we're gonna see Sherlock highlight around the map a little bit more commonly. Oh, hopefully so, but we'll see how that goes as the skirmish on top side once again. But an interesting thing that I am quite enjoying is, you mentioned before, the Lee Sin. What is he famous for? He's famous for his early game aggression, and I love to see Eels. If he's not ganking the lanes, which uh, he is making Zord's life a little bit more difficult, which I really like to see out of these early game junglers. But that being said, I would love to see him visiting a lane. Specifically, I oh, would Sherlock. To play because Sherlock is in a little bit. He has Conqueror proc, however, backing away. But... Pregs has been constantly using his Shadow Dash, his taunt to aggro onto Sherlock. And if the Lee Sin was visiting topside as Pregsy decides to go in, he has no escape outside of the flash. They could force the summoner spell out of the shed. I don't think that summoner spell would even help him uh, to boot because he would still be able to gap close onto him. Like Sherlock has that dash. Lee Sin has that, you know, that sonic wave that he can throw out and just latch right onto Pregsy. And since he's already low health, it could essentially be the execute. Yeah, you know, in my prediction, but it's interesting that we're not we're seeing a lot of trading, but we're not seeing a lot of pressure happening anywhere on the map. Like Sejuani and Lee Sin are pretty much the only reasons for a pressure. Oh, Ooh, Sherlock not trusting himself to use the repost there, and the repost into like the likes of the Shen is so difficult to do it properly because you get maybe half a second to properly react to it. So. I do quite like Sherlock. Basically, he needs to save his lunge to whenever Pregsy Shadow Dash, which does reduce Sherlock's uh, overall damage for now, perhaps, but it is the safer of the two options. As when it comes to the late game split push, uh, I think that Sherlock may have Pregsy uh, beat in terms of the champion picks, and Lee Sin may be visiting top soon. Lee Sin, yeah, he's coming up here now. He's coming through the bush. We could see a first blood coming. I mean, Prexy is quite overextended. Fiora is really trying to punish him with those hitting those vitals. Prexy is aware that, you know, Sherlock's aiming for him. Ooh, Shadow Dash is available. Uses it very early on. Still has the flash to potentially get out of life. Grand Challenge is issued. He does flash his way out of there. And Sherlock commits not to go under the tower. Pretty smart decision considering he has no mana and like half health. Oh, that was, it was so, it was so exciting to see though. Like you see Lee Sin come up right behind Prexy. Prexy does that Shadow Dash, taunts him. Gets that anti basic attack field going, keeps himself alive for a little bit longer, and as soon as he just came outside, you see the grand challenge coming from Sherlock, but nothing to follow up because it was right on the turret. And since no items have come about yet, where 
Sherlock gets extra health uh -oh. or extra damage. Oh no. Sherlock may be in trouble. Pregzi knows if he can get, if he can interrupt the recall. Oh, oh, that is beautiful. Sherlock is gonna go down. There is no way he gets out of that first blood coming in for Zone. I was not expecting such a huge turncoat. Like, she was so close to going back to base. But that shadow dash coming up for Pregzi, what happened, Fiora? You should have been able to see that coming. He wasn't able to react in time. And part of the reason was maybe a bit of panic. Brand or AFK did come to visit top lane as well. So a bit of a team decision to say, hey, we need to keep this Fiora down. But the punishment is really good out of the side of Melbourne High School right now. They decide, hey, you just sent your jungle top side. Well, you've given up all pressure on the bottom side of the map and grab themselves a free Cloud Dragon. Looking at the looking at the scoreboard and the you know the takedown the the people involved in that takedown, Brand was actually uh, left without either a, a kill or an assist. He just pretty much went up there for nothing. Like yeah, it, it's nice to go up there, but if you're not going to capitalize on anything or at least you know get rewarded for making your way up there, you're essentially putting yourself behind your counterpart. And just looking at how much Nico is trying to fly ahead, this could be like this could turn into a mid game mid fight. And I'm curious to see who would actually win this trade because both champions are doing so well. Exactly. I mean, I do quite like this. He's more skirmishing in top and Sherlock losing it uh, a bit for now. But I do quite like the fact that he did run up, even if he wasn't actually much. Oh, no. and so skirmishing on the bottom side of the, the prison connecting. There is no way Chess getting out of this one. Or is he with the Cosmic Radiance coming out, buying two and a half seconds? Can he get out? The Condemn not putting him against the wall. He's going into the time. He's not able to kill. Yes, he is. Harley. Oh. Number four, falling Eels now is CC'd up. A beautiful crescendo against two members. They will pick up a kill. The brand has arrived. Can he get the turnaround? It looks like he killed. Picks up one. Picks up two with the passive, and this time the roam comes up huge. Oh man, just that second coming right there. He roamed top, got nothing. Roamed bottom, completely took away two kills. What the heck, Brand? You are really, sh you're really coming to light. Like he managed, I believe he managed to get at least two stacks of his dark harvest in that single flight. That he's now going to fly even further ahead. He has two kills. He is behind by 20 CS, but that's not really going to be much of a problem simply because he's Brand. If he gets a full combo on you, you're pretty much going to need to sit back. And playing as Cassiopeia, you're going to have an even worse comp You're going to have an even worse trade-off against him because he can just run up to you and base attack. Like, he can orb walk you. He can keep running with you, keep attacking with you. And the only way that Cassiopeia, I think, will be able to defend itself is waste that Stone Gaze for a defensive getaway. I mean, when you want to waste that as a getaway, that's not exactly favorable, just like what we saw from chat. Ooh, we are seeing a skirmish on the bottom side. Final are being used by Harley. They are going onto the zone, who has no HP right now, so they are going to crush down the, the technically AD carry. Now, Tarek, will he be able to get out of this one alive? There isn't CC just yet, but the root coming out, the pushback as well, a beautiful combo, and they should be able to hunt down the flash from Leon to ensure chat has nowhere to go but back to base. I feel, I feel for, the, I feel for Melbourne. That was just a very unfortunate turnaround. Soon as that final hour came around, that was just completely the end. Like, I really impressive how Harley orb walked Tarek right towards the end. I mean, he stayed in front of him the entire way. He kept basically attacking him when, like, you know, when the animation was available. He really timed himself well. His internal clocks are pretty much right on point tonight. Like, he's pretty much set them up. He synced them around. And he's really looking to make some plays. He really wants to show us what it's like to play a mean vein. Exactly. 3-1-1 one, and one in the early game, which it can only spell disaster when we get to the latest stage of the game. Once she has picked up the two items that you were mentioning uh, during the pre-cast, that being the Blade of King and Quincy's Raid, but come back to that in a little bit as the Fiora is in a lot of trouble trying to get away out. Drops the CC, oh. but the prison is available and the flash oh. isn't going to save them. Meanwhile, the mid lane, however... Brander AFK falls as well. I swear, I think I saw like three flashes happen within 10 seconds. Like that was just a You're complete stomp hole. Miko managed to get the aggressive flash, takes down Brand. So now she's going to have even more advantage. She's almost 30 CS above him. She's getting close to that set 10 CS per minute. Sherlock, on the other hand, where are your wards? Like Zoe came in, helped for an easy kill, waited for that repose to come, waited for that repose to pop and then pop that Glacial Tomb to completely lock her down. And even though she flashed to try and get away, it was just unfortunate, like she failed. Exactly, one of those very unfortunate flashes that if you had your time again, I'm sure you'd think twice about. But right now we are, when we focus on the mid lane a little bit, as you said before, a 30 CS lead for Miko's Cassiopeia. And partly that is the roaming that Brander AFK has done. We've seen at least two roams 
Uh, one to top, one to bottom, one netting nothing, the other netting himself a double kill. But the roaming is going to hurt him in the long oh, run. Bregsy. works as Bregsy. Sherlock, actually doing the grand challenge, actually. He really wants the forces. He is going to get all the vital procs. Actually, no, he's oh. not. The flash from Pregsy and Sherlock does not feel comfortable tower diving. Oh, that was a very successful getaway. The flash to keep the, uh, you know, to increase the gap. I felt as though that Sherlock could have actually ended her. Like, if he got that last, uh, that last vital, that could have been it. Oh, we're seeing Brennan FK visiting top lane once again. Doesn't land his combo, unfortunately. But once again, he's decided to make the roam, and Cassiopeia needs to punish him. Push in the lane, as she's doing. And now we see her potentially roaming to the bottom side of the map, saying, hey, I'm not, you're not the only champion that can roam this game. Oh, just talking about roaming, we've got Sejuani coming down, as well as Lee Sin. So it looks like a 4v3 uh, possibility. But I wonder if they're going to do anything else. Dragon's coming about. We're seeing Zoid going to contest it now. And it is an infernal dragon, so they really want this a double stun, however, coming out. It looks like Cosmic Radiance is being popped very early on. The dragon is not down yet. It is secured by Eels, and now the fight is kicking off. As Vayne is finding up there, the Stan United coming in as well. The CC chain landing onto the Tarek, taking him down. But that may be the only kill as Miko is still going. Miko, wait! He stepped back. He's going to get flashed on and CC and taken down. Miko, that is not the footwork you were looking for. She had that cleanse, but she didn't pop it. I can understand. I can understand why she wouldn't pop it because it was just too much CC, you know, available for Team Reservoir. That, like, you know, this is pretty much what puts Cassiopeia in a very uncomfortable spot. Like her vulnerability is that she doesn't really have a lot of movement speed. She can't really buy brutes to increase her, uh, you know, her movement capabilities, and that's really <coughs> unfortunate. Oh, that's just a rude intro. I'm seeing a lot of this out of Prexy. He's just really trying to punish Sherlock when Sherlock has no mana because he doesn't really feel comfortable. Actually, a fight in the middle lane, Leon should be able to get out alive, but onto the top lane, we are seeing a bit of a CS advantage building in terms of Sherlock with the uh, nearly completed Ravenous Hydra. And when he's completed that, I feel like you need to start rotating him around the map. You need to put your bottom lane to top, put your top lane to bottom and play around Rift Herald, which is now the next major objective that is up for both teams. That would not actually be... I don't think that would be advisable because look what look what Reservoir have. They've got Leona and Vayne. Like, yes, Fiora does have the ability to, like, you know, negate some damage with Repost, but once, that da once that's down, what can she really do? She would need to start running for it because Vayne can just keep on top of her. And Vayne does a lot of damage when in a prolonged fight, especially with those basic attacks. You know, with that, you know, the, the ever resetting three uh, basic attacks stack. I would not want to put Fiora top lane. I'd be more inclined to actually throw her mid rather than top and have Cassiopeia trade uh, and sit passively up there because Shen can't really defend against, you know, a Cassiopeia if she manages to plant her poisons very effectively and try and keep her range at maximum. Shen can't really dash right into her face. He can get close, but. Because Cassiopeia's Twin Fangs acts as her basic attack and it's an ability, you know, Shen's W will not be very effective. Exactly, but uh, the Rift Herald was picked up throughout all of that. So Moment High School say we don't need to even swap lanes to look at uh, contesting objectives. We take it anyway. So the Rift Herald now sitting on to Eel's Lee Sin. And I want to know which turret will they potentially look to crack open because... My instinct is always break open the middle lane and turret. You can take control of the map. You can take control of the enemy jungle if you do so. And where do, like they've taken top lane effectively with Sherlock's split push. So are we potentially seeing Melbourne High School now going to prioritize at middle or bottom? Uh, I like Rift this. Th I like this. Th I like this theory you have in mind. I like this prediction, and it would be nice to see it pop mid lane. I mean, mid lane is the crucial lane that allow that enables more freedom of movement on the map. And seeing how Eels is really being active on the map, like he's done well to get two dragons. Now he's got Herald. He's, I'm really sure, I'm really unsure where he might pop it, but he's really, oh God, here we go. Eels going into Leon, but the Conqueror for Lee Sin is going to force Leona back to hell away, but another Q connecting. He will blast Cone his way out of range, but it does tell that he may even want to drop it on the bottom lane as we're seeing a lot of pressure generating on the bottom side. And poor Pragsy is being left alone against Sherlock's Fiora in this lane. And that's why that's why they have picked this champion. As much as it is painful to watch this champion being bullied around, it's it's his role within the team. It's to simply cash the side lane against Fiora, get bullied around all game, but to avoid losing turrets where possible. I feel as though he's, uh, you know, Fiora is capitalizing on everything. Just look at how many times he's procking those vitals. Look how much basic attack damage he's really throwing into him. He's really trying to make sure Shen can't even farm almost. I mean, he's getting close to basic attacking him under turrets. 
Oh, this so could they're getting be engaged something. on potentially a CC chain, however, does turn it around. It's the grand challenge is here. Now Miko has arrived on the brand or AFK. The bouncing is going back and forth, back and forth. Miko is gonna fall thanks to the brand passive, but now they execute brand. Actually, Miko lives somehow. And Pregzy now has arrived trying to help his team. He will potentially live as they are forced to back away Melbourne High School. Again, I like this hesitation to tower dive. There are so many games I've seen go completely sideways because of one or two completely botched tower dice. So Melbourne High School playing with aggression, but calculated aggression and a Rift Herald mid. Oh, yeah, like this, you're, you're, we can cash in on your prediction. You were expecting to see it mid lane because it does open up the map. I feel as though that Melbourne do have quite the advantage now. They do have, uh, you know, dominance over a majority of the map, especially the top half, like Cerner and Tarek, they're doing well to defend against Harley and Leon, but you know, it's really, it's really going to come down to like we're entering the mid game phase. We're seeing, I, we're seeing at least one item completed across the board. CS is no longer going to be too much of a priority, but pressure, but map pressure is really going to become something that each team would want to start focusing on if we want to start looking at objectives. Exactly. Ooh. Bit of an interesting. Like, it's interesting to see that Senna and Tara can't really go up against, uh, you know, take down Tara so easily. Like they don't really have the the basic ca basic attack capabilities. They don't have a demolish. But it's nice to see that they're still holding bottom lane quite evenly. Exactly. And that is why Senna and Tarek worked. It may not be a traditional lane by any means, but it can hold its own if you know what you are doing. And part of that is accelerating the gold generation now. Might think on that a little bit as the dragon is being started up. Eels is nearby. He may potentially go in for a steal. Oh, no! Not able to. And the CC chain. Can he get out alive? It doesn't look it. And actually, Eels has gone over the wall. Sorry. As the Fiora diving into the rest of the fight. Can they pick up any kills? The Cosmic Man has bought so much time. Eels now getting into the fight. Sherlock getting in there as well. He's actually getting a lot of damage Whoa. out with the Fiora. Cutting them down left, right, and damn all center. The wall isn't going to save him. Chases down Leona. And Brand or AFK oh. is going to fall as well. A double kill for Yora and a double kill for Miko. Just at 19 minutes 5, we see a complete ace happening for Reservoir. Melbourne are really turning the tides. They didn't collect on Dragon, but they are really cashing on in this investment. Like, they aced all of Reservoir. They've taken bottom lane. They've taken bottom turret. They've got the complete first wave of turrets down. So a majority of the map will work in favor of Melbourne. And if they try to, if they keep up warding, if they try and increase their warding capabilities on the map, because we're not really seeing very much. Like I'm seeing one, two, maybe three or four at maximum. Whereas like we're seeing a lot of, you know, wards happening from reservoir outside in crucial areas. This could still be like anybody's game. I mean, yes, they are down 8,000, but with Vayne and Leona, if they can try to be more proactive and not get caught out, like we saw in that team fight when Cerner managed to pop down that crescendo on at least three people, the Stone Gaze completely wiping down two members, Harley being a highlight member, it's really going to be like, it's pretty much becoming a game of who gets caught out first. Exactly, and so far it does appear that Reservoir uh, winning the game of getting caught out, which in this scenario is not the game you want to be winning. But in a way, Melbourne High School, really good committal to the plan when it came to there. And the teleport from Midi, I don't feel like Reservoir were really prepared for the Sona to arrive suddenly midway through the fight. But so far, Melbourne High School done a good lead to build them up that 7,000 gold. And now the question becomes the setup around the Baron. What are they able to do? Where are the vision was going? And the most important question to me is who is handling the minion wave allocation? Pushing the midway, pushing the top wave, pushing the bottom. You cannot stop pushing your waves even if you are setting up around Baron. I agree. And looking at the fact that Sherlock still has her teleport means that she's going to keep continue split pushing until a team fight occurs. And that is going to be really favorable for uh, Melbourne. Mainly because, like, Fiora is a very crucial player. If Crescendo and Tarot get his ulti off in the start to uh, soak up a lot of damage, a lot of abilities. Ooh, oh, seeing no. a CC chain on to the brand. He goes down Sherlock now in a one versus two, but the rest of the team is being hunted down. A lovely solar flare to buy time, but is it going to be enough? Petrifying Gaze not used by Miko, not needed, but they saw two members on the bottom side. Reservoir a little bit desynced there. You cannot afford to send multiple members to deal with the Fiora. You have the Shen. It needs to be his responsibility because if if you do that, there is every chance for Baron to start coming out of Melbourne High School. And this, it looks like this is going to happen. We're seeing Baron, you know, we're seeing a tackle on Baron. We see, they're now looking to try and contest it. This could be a tango between both teams. They're backing I feel away. Like this, 
Reservoir are backing away. They're too scared of the Fiora split push right now. They're sending Shen and Vayne once again. Zordal is somewhere nearby, but I don't think he's going to be able to steal it. He's two levels down. If he steals this, it will be nothing short of a miracle. But they are waiting. They've stopped aggroing onto the Baron. They cannot do it. No. Yes, they do. They take it down. They coordinated the damage. Really good job here. Melbourne High School, they knew what to do to prevent Zordal having any chance of a steal. What was Sejuani thinking? She just <coughs> pops the Glacier Tomb, jumps over the wall, just like jumps over the wall into the Baron pit, tries to get a steal, but by the time she dashed through the wall, Baron already went down and Lee Sin just completely, just like, the, sorry, all of Melbourne completely collapsed on her as well as, actually no, Leona got away with that. But nonetheless, Zoid really suffered a heavy casualty in that fight. I mean, they have Baron buff, they managed to push around the place, You've got Fiora who's demanding at least two members from Reservoir to come to sort of like, you know, blockade against her. Then it's really look it's really looking grim for Reservoir. Like I feel as though the best summary to give is that it's heavily in favor of Melbourne that Reservoir are essentially gonna have to stay inside their walls if they want to try and uh, prolong this game to the point that they can begin to turn the tides. They will need more items to keep alive. They will also need to try and let Vayne catch up and Leona get a little bit more tanky. Cause I feel as though they can do well to engage on team fights, as long as Vayne doesn't get caught. A near miss ulti from Leona though. Leona firing off the ulti there. Sherlock was prepared with the repost, but what's interesting is that shows a desync out of the reservoir bot lane. Harley had no intention to follow that. He was backing away to farm the minion wave. So maybe the side of reservoir not exactly all reading the same book right now, which is a little bit unfortunate, but. They need to now get on that same page. They need to find the chapter, find that bookmark, and realize, okay, what chapter are we reading? We're reading the, t the chapter on how to turtle against the Baron buff, because if they can't read that, I'm really concerned that Melbourne High School is just going to break them open in the next few minutes. And Oh, Sherlock oh. going on the bottom side. Harley is in a lot of trouble. He has reinforcement. Sherlock is going to go down to the turret. No! Has the stopwatch and now chats here to keep him alive. His top lane, Harley, is trying to go in the exhaust drop, but the oh. crescendo takes down the vein. The music is too strong. You cannot stop it now. The follow-up, the Glacial Prison landing, but chat is already on parole. He's already out. The lovely three-man stun as well. This fight is taking so long. Cassio is arriving in the back lane. They need to be careful. If she gets a multi-man stun, this is disastrous. No, not a single stun. But the CC coming in from chat is far too much. Zordal falls, Leon falls, and Eels, while all this is happening, decides to visit top lane, secures himself the inhibitor. His guardian angel is burnt, but he might be able to get his way out of this one. No, flashes forwards, gets a kill, and will live. What was that? What was that turn coat? Just he pops the guy at an angel. Brand tries to run away, gets away clearly. But as soon as Randhouse kick comes around, or sorry, Dragon Rage comes around, pops that Q, manages to dash in for an execute. Just well done to Eels. And then bottom lane, I don't, I can't believe how much damage uh, Chat and me completely soaked up. Like they took down Vayne, and you know with the unfortunate of Sherlock. But that's not really, that's nothing short of like how good Melbourne have come along. Like they've taken all three inhibitors now. They still have Baron buff. And at 25 minutes even, this looks like it could be a pre-30 minute game. I mean, look how aggressive they've become. Look at the stats. Like they're at least 20,000, they're almost 20,000 gold above the Reservoir. They've taken two dragons. They've taken Herald. They've taken Baron. They've got a very good kill count going on. Like a lot of takedowns across the board. I wonder what Reservoir will need to do in response to this, because so far they they really get like they've really got the short end of the stick on this one. I think the only way Reservoir really gets back into a game like this is they just need to pick off MHS Black at any opportunity they see a player on their own. So that's I think their only real option. But even then, I'm just a little concerned about the damage. As you said, nearly twenty thousand got about fifteen in favor of MHS Black and. Like, they don't have a Baron buff anymore, but with three inhibitors down, I think they should just be going down the mid lane and ending. They've got such a strong composition right now, and I don't think that Reservoir in a 5v5 fight can do much, especially if Harley gets killed early on in this fight. This Vayne has three items, but I just don't feel like she's able to get the damage out. No, she has come to that. She has come online. She has hit her power spike, but it's not working well. Like, as you said, she has been caught out quite a bit. She did go down early, and in a situation like, actually, this might be the game-ending moment. Like, we're seeing all of Melbourne just completely collapsing on that last turret. Oh, next is turret left. Cosmic Radiance being a lovely two-man CC coming out of the crescendo. They are now diving on top, but the brand is getting a lot of passive pops up, but the 
Not getting enough. Harley on the sideline. Can he do it? This vein is getting at least one kill out of the belt. But they're diving on top of it and they have happily gone vein spotting. Now the support is going to fall a double kill for both solo laners. And that is going to be the game. Reservoir did their best. They came so far. But MHS Black will take the victory over the opposite numbers. A very, a very interesting gameplay. And like just as we've seen, Sona and Tarek as bottom lane are a very interesting combination. They don't do well early game. But once we get into team fight scenarios, it's a completely different story. I mean, the invulnerability from Tarek's ulti, Cerner's crescendo to completely stun people, as well as dish out a large scale amount of damage. I mean, that really set off Melbourne, uh, Melbourne High School to completely like, you know, turn the tides and like almost completely win a 5v5 team fight, especially since it was early game that we first saw it. Exactly. I mean, this is juicy. Yeah, and part of the reason they got such an aggressive lead in the early game is look at the junglers that they drafted. Eels is playing that early game aggressive jungler. So he was able to get this uh, early game rolling in his team's favor. And each of the lanes worked out brilliantly for them. In the top lane, their Fiora was kind of left on her own in the early game. She got to her split push phase very nicely. Nico, Miko, sorry, got very powerful in this Cassiopeia after a few... Uh, unsuccessful roams from the brand and the bottom lane of the Tarek Sona sure they're not exactly the most lane dominant but they held on they scaled to the mid game and they came out massive in those fights I agree I agree wholeheartedly with Damon and like looking at Miko's like end game stats like look at her item build look at the gold accumulation her KDA status I mean she was like I feel as though she pretty much did a lot for her team. Like she really came in line once she started getting those items. I mean, we did see an early game disadvantage where she couldn't really, you know, roam around the map. She did get taken down quite easily because of her vulnerability, which is, you know, not a lot of movement speed, but that didn't really hold her back. Like she did so sorry, Miko did so well to hold off until the fight like until that turning point where he can really come in line for his team. I mean, he landed nearly every single poison. His twin fangs were doing maximum damage. What else can you like? What else can you really expect to see from uh, like uh, Cassiopeia completely coming in line? That was just very impressive and very insightful to see from uh, you know a player such as Miko. Exactly, but that is going to wrap up the second game of the meta plays for tonight, guys. And thank you everyone for joining us. And remember, there are still plays happening in the next week and the future. So we hope to see everybody for the future weeks of Meta to see who is going to come out on top. But on behalf of myself and the entire broadcast crew, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next week. These expectations take and weigh me down My heart is begging me to get the hell out of my head I'm gonna live inside the upside down For a minute and pretend Honey, I'm a perfect ten, whoa, whoa Honey, I'm a perfect ten, whoa, whoa And if I say it